Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends and glad you could attend. Come inside today as we take a look at a horror film with a great name called The G-String Horror. Now, this story is about a film production company that goes and films a horror movie or want to film a horror movie at a hundred-year-old movie theater called the Market Street Cinema, now turned Strip Club. Well, while there, they had heard stories of a haunting there, and they wanted to kind of reenact those things, but things start to become more real, and they soon find themselves with a documentary on hand about the cinema and the going-ons there, the paranormal activities going on. And we get to see how those events affect the film crew, the girls working there, as well as the rest of the staff. G-string horror. Now, on the surface, it sounds like pretty much a tongue-in-cheek, ha-ha, lots of TNA, very little substance. But I got to say, this film surprised me. Now, the Market Street Cinema, where it took place, actually has recorded events of strange shit happening, ghost style. Uh, for many years, apparently, there have been random stories about this. And so the fact that this film is trying to capture that spirit for lack of a better term, sorry for the pun, uh, is amazing, and I really say everybody in here does a great job. All the performers in here, from Ed Bowers, who plays the janitor, to Jenna Darling, who plays Red, the beautiful Jenna Darling, uh, everybody in here does very well and plays this as a mockumentary. Some of these people seem very real, and it, it these seem like authentic interviews, uh, which surprised me. So I had a hard time to tell if there was acting going on or if these were actually real people talking about the events going on. So there's a great uh, mystery there of, you know, who's acting and who's real. And I, I really like that bit. Now, uh, there are some gruesome, gory parts in here as they reenact some of the events that have been told that have happened there in the cinema. And this location itself is creepy as hell. Let me tell you, I, I, but very cool. I wanted to go here just because, and not because of the strip club part, but, but the old hundred year old theater, the the, the decrepitness of, of the theater itself, and, and the disarray that the, the basement was in. I mean, just stuff everywhere. The you know, foundation crumbling, but yet you can just feel the history coming through the screen. So they capture that feeling very well. Charles Webb, who directed this film, uh, as well as helped produce this film, definitely puts together a decent mockumentary documentary film, okay, and definitely will get you feeling like this is a real documentary. Now, near the end, as things kind of escalate a bit, uh, things get a little more wild and a little bit more uh, crazy in there, and a little less realistic feeling, okay, but uh, I would say the first half of this film feels like a solid, authentic documentary for sure, and then things start to ramp up as the paranormal activities start to happen. Folks, uh, I like the G-String Horror. There wasn't a whole lot I didn't like, although the idea that the performers of the film that they were shooting are starting to get possessed, it was kind of tough to tell between the demons and the, the performers, okay? They were doing the same thing, so, but makeup looked really good on them, the gore effects looked decent in here, and everybody does a good job of selling this as a real documentary. Folks, I would suggest if you get a chance, check out the G-String Horror. I do believe it's actually available on Amazon as well as iTunes. Yeah, it's a fun film. It's not quite found footage so much as mockumentary. And it's definitely an interesting take and also help preserve a piece of a theater that has now since been closed down and get you some of the, you know, spirit, if you will, of that film and that cinema that was 100 years old. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuff.